All right, welcome to the first half of Electric Potential. We're going to go through everything up to uh, page 554, which is where we'll begin point charges. But first, let's just look at generic ideas of electric potential. And electric potential is something where I think we're going to start with an analogy because electric potential is something that's very hard to picture. It's hard to uh, understand. It's really something that's used kind of a generic sense. It, it's not a very sp uh, specific measurement. All right, so imagine you have a pendulum kind of swinging back and forth and back and forth. There you have energy, which is going from potential energy, gravitational potential energy, as it's moving along here. And as it starts to swing downwards down at the bottom, all of that potential energy is turned into kinetic energy and then back into potential energy and vice versa as it's moving along there. So the change in potential energy. So whenever I have this delta, uh, the Greek letter delta, little triangle. I always think of uh, the movie Revenge of the Nerds when I see the uppercase delta. Um, it's the final minus the initial, the end point minus the beginning. All right. In this case, the work done by gravity, gravity is pulling it downwards, so it's actually losing potential energy. And then as you lift it, you give it potential energy, so back and forth. Right, you lifted it up, you gain, gain potential energy, gravity it loses that potential energy and it turns into kinetic energy. So the amount of work done is equal to mgh and h is positive as it moves up, negative as it moves down. So the work can be positive or negative when it's gaining energy, uh, negative when it's losing energy. But when you're dealing with gravitational potential energy, as long as we ignore friction, and a you know, kid going down a slide or a ball going down a slide. It doesn't really work to completely ignore friction. Um, but when we're dealing with small point charges, we'll, we'll assume that there's nothing really in between them. They're kind of isolated in a vacuum, basically. Then we can deal with uh, the lack of friction. But if we can ignore friction, then the only thing that matters from the ball going from the top to the bottom is the difference in height. The path length isn't going to matter. It's just how far it's dropped will tell you how much work has been done by gravity, how much kinetic energy has been gained, things like that, things of that nature. Okay, so let's kind of explicitly see what this looks like. Um, here we have G, which is the gravitational field, which we talked about last time, is very similar to the electric field. Um, if we have the Earth, the Earth's always attracting things, so the gravitational field points down. The version of that that's, that's similar is if we have a negative charge here, the electric field points toward the negative charge. All right, a ball is being pulled downwards or lifted upwards. If you lift the, the ball upwards, it's going to increase gravitational potential energy. Here, the, the version of a positive mass is a, is a positive charge, and if you move that away from a negative charge, you have to pull against it. You know, the electric force is going to be pulling the positive charge toward the negative charge. Um, but if you're lifting it up that way, you're increasing its potential energy. All right, if you were to let go of it, the force would be downwards and it's going to decrease in potential energy. All right. Uh, the way we calculate work is just force times distance. So in this case, the force is just the charge of the object multiplied by the electric field. It's the definition we had uh, last time. And then plugging that in, the work is going to be plus or minus QE, which is the force times distance. Plus, when they're kind of moving away and you're increasing energy, you're moving against the electric field lines. You're going to be gaining um, energy, so the work will be positive. If you go along the electric field lines, you're losing energy, so that work is going to be negative. All right, so the change in potential energy, uh, what we'll, we'll consider, we'll assume this is moving at a constant speed. If it's speeding up or slowing down, the work could be equal to the change in kinetic energy as well. So the change in in electric potential energy in this case instead of gravitational potential energy is plus or minus QED. Plus if you're going against the electric field minus if you're going with the electric field. Just like you're dropping an object or lifting an object. So now lifting the object, dropping the object. Alright, so here we're going 
you're lifting the object, you're, you're doing work, starting close, moving away, you're basically going from, it's just like lifting the object. So it starts out with some potential energy, you've added energy and it drops. Here, it starts out far away, you have to l lower it down slowly and not just letting it move so that the work is negative and so it's a drop in energy, PE for potential energy. All right, uh, we're going to assign something called the electric potential difference. The, the electric potential, the symbol for that is V. Um, delta V is the, char the change in potential between two points, point B and point A. Think of B as our end point, A as our beginning point. So it's, it's defined as the change in energy divided by the charge. Just like we had electric field was the force per charge, electric potential difference is the change in energy per charge. And the units of that are joules per coulomb, which we'll simplify as the volt. And that's probably a, a unit you're at least somewhat familiar with. And then the really happy, lovely thing is voltage, potential difference, the kind of a, it's, it's used interchangeably, is a scalar. That means we don't have to worry about trig, we don't have to worry about direction, we don't have to worry about angles. It's a scalar, so we're much, much happier. So we can rearrange that equations and get basically our voltage difference is plus or minus E times D. Plus when we're going against the electric field, minus when we're going with it. All right. Nice thing about it, the change in potential doesn't depend on the path taken, only on the endpoints, if we assume this, uh, this constant uh, result. All right, so basically what we're going to do with electric potential is show the energy as we're moving things around, as we're, as we're adding charges, as we're, we're changing things around. And most of the examples we're going to do at this point, unless we're dealing with point charges, we're going to be dealing with constant electric fields. Um, because unless, if we have a changing electric field, we're going to have to look at how um, the, the work changes and we might get a few different uh, effects to it. And we'll see that a little bit later. Um, but the electric potential is, is high when you're fighting against something low when you're, you're doing what it wants to do. All right, so here's an example. Uh, this is a picture showing two wires coming in um, and there's a, a little bit of oil with little tiny pieces of thread in there and when you put the charge in there you get what's called the two parallel plates and in between two parallel plates near the center you get an electric field that is basically straight across. If you look at the edges here, it starts to curve around at the edges, but in the middle, it looks, it's basically straight across. So that's going to be a, a region with a constant electric field. So we're going to use this type of result a lot of times because it's one of the few things where we get that nice constant electric field. All right, so let's take a proton and move it from the positive plate to the negative plate. So in this case, it's going to be going with the electric field, so it's losing that energy. It wants the, the positive proton wants to go down to the negative um, charges. It's, it's attracted to them, it's repelled by the other positive charges. So we're going to be losing um, electric potential energy, uh, electric potential energy as it moves along. So we have an electric field of 1800 newtons per coulomb. It can also be uh, given to you in the units of volts per meter which we'll talk a little bit about uh, in class. And the distance between the two plates is one and a half centimeters. So to plug into that, uh, we can get that the voltage is electric field times the distance. We get a negative sign because it's going with the electric field. So the voltage is 1800 newtons per coulomb times 0 0.015 meters, which is negative 27 volts. And then if we take the charge of that proton, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs, and multiply that by the voltage, we can get the energy, which is negative 4.238 times 10 to the minus 18th joules. All right, so that is the first part of what we're dealing with, and we'll, we'll do a few examples with that in class. Now move on to video 4B, or 3B, and we'll deal with point charges. It should be a very short, uh, much shorter um, lecture. All right, thank you very much.